This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. South today. A large donation is sparking protests in Invercargill, with a thousand signatures being presented to the city mayor. The Dunedin City Council's annual plan hearings are underway with a 4.1% rates rise being voted on. And tourism is returning to Dunedin as pandemic alert levels drop. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. Otaratara community members have asked the Invercargill City Council to revisit its plans in relation to the donation of $90,000 left in a will of a resident. About a dozen members delivered a petition yesterday with over 1,000 signatures to Mayor Sir Tim Shadbolt opposing the proposed project. Protesters from Otatara present Invercargill Mayor Sir Tim Shadbolt with a petition with over a thousand signatures opposing a project to refurbish an Otatara park with a barbecue and landscaping. Well, this is what you call democracy in action. We've uh, made a decision at council and now we've thought about it and the community's thought about it and we want to revisit the, this legacy. When local resident Derek Gostolo died last year, he gave $90,000 to the Invercargill City Council on the condition the money be spent on community projects within the Otatara area. Cathy Morrison of the Invercargill Ratepayer Advocacy Group says she and many others attended a meeting to suggest the best way to spend the generous bequeathment. We were thrilled to be asked our opinions and people gave their opinions clearly and then we voted for the priorities that people had and what the council has chosen for some unearthly, unexplained reason is the one that was at the bottom of the list. Otatara resident Penny Ivey says she sent out a survey to well over a thousand homes in the district after reading in the Otago Daily Times about where the bequested money was going to. When I read in the Otago Daily that they, the council had decided to ignore our wishes, I put a comment on the Otatara Notice Board Facebook page about it in disagreement and I got so much support from the Otatara ratepayers that I felt duty bound to do something about it. So um, I drafted out the survey and got it delivered to 1,700 to 1,000 homesteads and the, re the response was amazing. 90% responded to say they did, didn't agree with the proposal that the council had decided on and they wanted it revisited. However, Invercargill City Councillor Nobby Clark says there is a procedural hurdle to overcome for the money to be spent elsewhere. But unfortunately, the only way it can be revisited is if five elected members sign up a, uh, a notice of motion. Myself and the Mayor are prepared to do that, but none of the other 11 councils are prepared to. So unfortunately, from a, a process perspective, even though the community is upset and, a, and a, given a survey back with over a thousand ratepayers in Otara, being upset about it and wanting to revisit, it doesn't look as though that's actually going to happen. One of the more popular suggestions is that the grant go to Bush Haven, a private rehabilitation centre for injured native birds. In Invercargill, the South Today. The Department of Conservation says a first cell pup seen on the rocks at St Clair Beach in Dunedin yesterday morning is no cause for concern. Dock Ranger Jim Fife says there's been a few cell pups spotted along the Otago coastline recently, although some were found dead. Fife says there's a policy of minimal intervention with fur seals, as they aren't considered threatened. The pups probably came from Green Island, where about 300 pups had been born, with currents bringing them to St Kilda and St Clair beaches. As Dunedin continues to come to grips with the effects of COVID-19, the Dunedin City Council has signalled an updated 4.1% rates rise. Councillors began the 2020-2021 annual plan deliberations yesterday, grappling with an estimated $6.5 million loss in operating revenue. The financial fallout from COVID-19 is biting hard across all aspects of society. As part of the fallout, 
the Dunedin City Council will postpone large projects and try to ease the rate burden on the city's residents. In a post-COVID situation where we really can't guarantee anymore the uh, high level of rates uh, payment that we've had in the past, we can't guarantee any more the high levels of fees that we've been charging, for instance, at the landfill. Are the risks that much greater now, in your opinion, because of COVID than they were prior to COVID? Councillors began the 2021 annual plan deliberations grappling with an estimated $6.5 million loss in operating revenue, which has been exacerbated by the council's decision to spend more than a million dollars mothballing the Needham Railways. Council staff have managed to find $4.8 million worth of operating savings while maintaining the council's levels of service. So we own $1.5 billion worth of companies that have, or more than probably, that have about 40 to 45% 40, of that as debt. Um, many other companies, uh, most of the other councils don't actually do that through a centralised treasury, which means you can't compare apples with apples, it's council debt alone. After much deliberation, the council passed a 4.1% rates rise and a decision to borrow more than $7.5 million. Annual plan hearings continue tomorrow. In Dunedin, the South Today. Emergency services rushed to a Dunedin street yesterday evening after reports of a body on the road only to find a mannequin. A witness said two ambulances, a fire appliance and a police car arrived at the South Road at scene. He said the emergency services were at the scene about 7pm. A police spokeswoman told the Otago Daily Times there was a report of a body on the road, however it appears it was a mannequin. As the country eases into Alert Level 2, some tourist ventures are reopening to the public. The Monarchs Cruises of Otago Harbour is one tourist operation resuming business, although it's only three days a week. Dunedin's iconic Monarch cruises are set to resume on Otago Harbour this weekend, after about seven weeks locked down on dry land. Normally the cruises work seven days a week, but skipper Neil Young is predicting it will be a slow, quiet start well into summer. Well, uh, looking forward to getting back into on Saturday, uh, Sunday, and um, from there three days a week. That'll be through uh, the winter, and then we'll um, hook back into a bigger schedule come summer. He says there'll have to be changes on how people get to view wildlife from the boat, which may include the boat making a U-turn so passengers on both sides can view wildlife as they appear. There is a tendency for people to, to rush to the dolphins of course or to the penguin popping up or you know to the whatever's going on, the, the fish or whatever and so hence um, we'll have to sort of be managing that with some level of social distancing and so we can't take as many people on the boat to start and uh, we'll have to manoeuvre a bit differently and uh, we'll have to locate people according to their bubbles and, and um, you know uh, work with them to uh, ensure that everyone gets a good sight of the wildlife um, but with these parameters. Young says the Monarch cruises are not going to be as bad off as some other tourist ventures, but it will still have to be a reduction in staff hours. Uh, thankfully we do have uh, a reasonable domestic market, but uh, international uh, was still, including the Australians, the majority of our custom. Uh, so it will, will be down, no doubt, for this coming summer. And uh, normally, you know, with the cruise ships, for us a big trade, you know, we would be working normally um, 12, 13 hour days, um, uh, but we're thinking, you know, with a reduced schedule even in our six-day summer s schedule now, uh, it'll be maybe eight, you know, eight, nine-hour days. So those staff which are left will be working less, uh, you know, to you know, understand the less demand and still be here for custom because the wildlife is still there. There's still plenty of wildlife and the sites are still as spectacular as ever. Uh, but uh, hopefully that bubble can open the New Zealand bubble to include Australia, etc. And uh, we can get our international visitors back to show them. In Dunedin, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, hot fans are brewing up a beer competition in Queenstown and a spicy satay takes out a culinary competition in Belclutha. So see you after the break.
season, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Step into Shop on Carroll and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. Step into Ross Cafe located at Ross Home in North East Valley. We have a great range of hot and cold food, friendly service and a warm atmosphere that you are sure to enjoy. We look forward to serving you soon at Ross Cafe. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Heaven Sent Pet Cremations knows that losing a pet is like losing a family member. And we have many special ways for you to keep their memory dear to your heart. From caskets, remembrance pendants, to Remembrance Spheres. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today. You've seen us in the street, now find us online. Check out shopon.org.nz. We have all sorts of treasures, from retro and vintage clothing to antiques, homewares and accessories. New items added every week. We're open 24-7. Wrens are Otago's painting, tiling and plastering experts. Offering a free measure and quote, Wrens is a name you can trust to get the job done right. Call Wrens today on 477-9384 or visit wrens.co.nz. Do you know Youth Grow in North East Valley? It's an awesome plant nursery where young people can work and learn life skills. You can now order your vegetable seedlings, herbs, bulbs and shrubs over the phone or by email. Either pick up your order on Norwood Street in North East Valley, or they can deliver to you. Look for Youth Grow Garden Centre on Facebook or visit youthgrow.org.nz. Happy gardening! Inside are all sorts of innovations from all over China. Welcome back. An elderly woman who died at Auckland St. Margaret's Rest Home last week is New Zealand's 22nd COVID-19 death. A death notice for Eileen Hunter, 96, said the Rest Home resident died due to COVID-19 on May the 24th. Hunter's family believes she contracted the deadly virus during an outbreak that infected staff and patients. But before today, her death had not been recorded in the Ministry of Health's official COVID-19 death statistics. In the 1pm media briefing today, Director General of Health Ashley Bloomfield said Hunter's death would now be treated as being related to COVID-19. There are no known active cases of COVID-19 in the South Island, the Ministry of Health confirmed today. Queenstown residents are being asked to submit any great ideas they might have for a new beer. The call for innovative inspirations comes as part of a promotional launch of a new beer inspired by the resilience shown in the fight against COVID-19. There's a new beer being launched in Queenstown. It's intended to celebrate the resilience shown against COVID-19, hence its name, the Sea Bomb. Along with the launch of this cargo brewery beer is the invitation for people to share any great innovative ideas they may have for the region. I think what we're encouraging is people from many walks of life um, to give them the, the, a bit of an ability to come to us with an idea. And so it can be from business, it can be from anyone, even a student. Um, I think what we're doing is just encouraging Queenstown to get behind the innovative ideas. Fluid brand strategist James Cummings says they're looking for ideas which can be positive for the Queenstown area. We're after creative ideas, innovative ideas and ideas that kind of actually um, will, will give back to um, Queenstown. So anything that sort of, you know, celebrates that, um, that environment. And they'll select the best idea and try and find a way to make it come to reality. We'll, uh, we'll pick a winner, we'll contact them um, uh, you know, via email or, or, or Facebook and, and we'll host a half day workshop um, and that's probably out at Waiteri Creek, um, one of Cargo's 
um, destinations, um, and that half the workshop will be um, part of our brand strategy and design team, and it'll be about identifying the idea and, and getting to the core of it and working out how we can get it, have, get it made. People can submit their thoughts online if they place their ideas on Facebook or Instagram, tagging their post with hashtag CBOMCOMP. In Queenstown, the South today. Despite not being able to go ahead as planned this year, the Clutha District Settlement Food Fest still found a way to entice the district's foodies. An online competition saw a variety of dishes being submitted from across the region. Last year the Cross Recreation Centre was filled as hundreds went along to the Clutha District Settlement Support's annual culture feast. This year it was a totally different enchilada as the lockdown bit hard. With the public event cancelled, organisers came up with the idea for an online recipe competition. Entrants submitted their favourite recipe and uploaded a photo and from this a simple but popular recipe came out on top. Sate is a simple recipe one that Balclutha stay-home mum, Shima Ahmed, remembered that her father-in-law often cooked at his home in Malaysia. Satay ha have a many, some, some people cook different, but my father-in-law cook, uh, I love the taste because uh, it's like originally the satay, the, the old wine, like uh, the old recipe, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's good recipe, yeah. Cooking is a passion for Mrs. Hamid. She says that she loves sharing her cooking with friends online and also cooks for their neighbours. I feel happy because I'm, I like to introduce people uh, my, my culture recipe, my, my, uh, my country recipe. And then uh, when people like it and people want to try, uh, I very love it. Because the, uh, last year we uh, sell the food, the satay, they really love it because uh, it's really fast selling. <laughs> I love cooking because it's uh, from my uh, it's my passion, and I cook from my heart with the love for everyone I love. <laughs> Her motto is: if it smells good, it tastes good. John Cosgrove for the South today. After the break on the South today, COVID nineteen prompts a Queenstown tour guide to decide on a more artistic career, and we have tomorrow's weather for you. So catch you after the break. Step into Ross Cafe, located at Ross Home in North East Valley. We have a great range of hot and cold food, friendly service and a warm atmosphere that you are sure to enjoy. We look forward to serving you soon at Ross Cafe. Wrens are Otago's painting, tiling and plastering experts. Offering a free measure and quote, Wrens is a name you can trust to get the job done right. Call Wrens today on 477-9384 or visit wrens.co.nz. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Do you know Youth Grow in North East Valley? It's an awesome plant nursery where young people can work and learn life skills. You can now order your vegetable seedlings, herbs, bulbs and shrubs over the phone or by email. Either pick up your order on Norwood Street in North East Valley or they can deliver to you. Look for Youth Grow Garden Centre on Facebook or visit youthgrow.org.nz. Happy gardening! 
Heaven Sent Pet Cremations knows that losing a pet is like losing a family member. And we have many special ways for you to keep their memory dear to your heart. From caskets, remembrance pendants, to remembrance spheres. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today. You've seen us in the street. Now find us online. Check out shopon.org.nz. We have all sorts of treasures, from retro and vintage clothing to antiques, homewares and accessories. New items added every week. We're open 24-7. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community. Inside are all sorts of innovations from all over China. Welcome back. After the demise of her business due to COVID-19, a former Queenstown tour guide has decided on a more artistic career choice. Artist Lee van der Gees has gone back to her roots, offering classes in creating wire sculptures. Queenstown artist Lee van der Gees has opened her art studio at home to teach wire sculpting to others. The moves come out of necessity when she saw her tourism guiding business close after COVID-19. Because I've always loved doing this, my first reaction was let's just carry on with that and grow it. And then because I was fortunate enough to have everything at home and have this space in the house, so I was able to set up the classes. Originally working as a florist, she's had 35 years experience in conducting art classes and workshops and developed a few tricks with frames to make wire sculpting fun and satisfying for beginners. It's not as difficult as it looks and I'm here to help and make it easier and we've come out with cunning plans to make frames and shapes for you to work with so it'll make it a lot, lot easier. Yeah, it's not as, not as ter terrifying as it looks. It's actually really good fun. Her son has helped out by designing a stylish new website for her Lake Hay studio and art classes, which are set to cover a wide range of creative activities. Grapevine weaving, willow weaving, um, possibly cooking classes, some painting classes. So just mixing it up and keeping it seasonal, also doing Christmas classes. And you'll be able to come along for two hours and create a little heart or a kiwi, or you could spend the full day and create something like a pussy cat. In Queenstown, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. A large donation is sparking protests in Invercargill, with a thousand signatures presented to the city's mayor. The Dunedin City Council's annual plan hearings are underway, and residents are facing a 4.1% rates rise as council debt increases. And cruises on Dunedin's Monarch are returning as restrictions within Pandemic Alert Level 2 are gradually lowered. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Craig Page, what have you got for us in tomorrow's ODT? Some more doom and gloom, sadly. Uh, it seems to be the way at the moment, isn't it? Um, yeah. Some really sobering figures released today on job losses in, in New Zealand. And of course we've got the, the South figures there as well, shows uh, almost 4,500 jobs. Uh, in Otago and Southland uh, dropped in April, um, that's 37,500 in the country. Um, and the chamber, local chamber chief Dougal McGowan's warning that it's going to get even worse once the May figures are released because we only went into lockdown of course in April and things started rolling from there. Um, yeah and when the subsidy ro ro like fin finishes and like, it'll be interesting to see what happens then. Yeah he talks a bit about that as well. Uh, he said also they don't take into account the number of people who have had their hours reduced or are now working part-time as well so a lot worse out there and we hear a lot about a lot of the bigger companies losing 20 
twenty percent of their workforce, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he says there's small businesses that have just been forced to close their doors. Um, we, we tend to forget a bit about those as well. So, yeah, a bit sad all round, really. And um, we talked to a local woman, Judy Trevathan. Um, she's one of 51 people who lost a job at Dunedin Railways with the Tyree Gorge, of course, stopping that train as well. She's worked in tourism for 30 years, um, now out of a job. Um, she's pretty upbeat about it, though, surprisingly, uh, and, and doesn't sort of feel sorry for herself because there are so many other people in the same situation, and, and as she says, worse off than herself. So, uh, yeah, well worth a read, those figures. Uh, we've also got a story about the new marketing uh, slogan for Dunedin, and as with any marketing slogan, some people love it and some don't. It's called Dunedin, a pretty good plan D. Um, take from that what you will. Uh, it's aimed at encouraging those who had their original travel plans cancelled because of COVID to now look at Dunedin. Um, yeah, there's been some mixed response, fair to say. Yeah, already. Uh, yeah, perhaps slightly more negative than positive. Um, but uh, Enterprise and Eden came up with a slogan, and then, they, as they say, you know, we, we are expecting some negativity, but um, we hope to get some positives out of it. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Watch this space. Yeah, exactly. That's us. Wonderful. You can catch all of that and everything else in tomorrow's ODT. And so now it's time for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Molnap. Starting with the Southern View, Meg and Andy having a walk on St. Clair Beach. Now looking at the situation, a mostly fine weekend ahead as high pressure keeps skies clear and temperatures cold. Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport are looking at cloudy skies with 14 degrees. Across to the northeast, Nelson and Blenheim can expect some cloud, a few showers, and 13 degrees. Moving down to Canterbury, cloudy here as well, Kaikoura and Christchurch head for 12, while Ashburton can expect cloudy skies and 11 degrees. To the southern towns, those in the Catlins, Belclutha, Lumsden and Gore are set for light winds and clear skies with 11 degrees for all of you. Heading to central Otago, all centres in this area are due for light winds and clear skies. Queenstown should reach 11, Wanaka and Tiana 12 with 13 degrees in Alexandra. To the northern towns on the coast, Timaru and Oamaru are due for light winds and some cloud, with both heading for highs of 12 degrees. In Dunedin, some cloud tonight but frosty inland with an overnight low of zero. Fine and cold tomorrow with a high of 12 and a low of zero. And it's set to still be fine and chilly on Saturday with a high of 12 and a low of 1 degree. And in Invercargill, some cloud tonight with an overnight low of 3. Fine and sunny tomorrow with a high of 12 and a low of 2. And it's set to be the same again on Saturday with a high of 12 and a low of 3. And that's all for our news this Thursday. For the latest news from the Southern Region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook or YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Ka kite anu. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.